Okay, let's talk about Klimt. Okay. It's uh, <clears throat> not what you expect in this collection, but he had his birthday this year, and there were a lot of exhibitions and, of course, a lot of catalogs about it. Yeah, so this is one of them. It's uh, published by uh, Patrick Hans for Museum of Applied Arts in Vienna. And uh, they're lucky enough to have the original drawings of the Palis Doklet. So it's the frieze actually for this um, room, uh, this dining room in Brussels, the Palis Doklet, which uh, in the beginning would have been um, projected for, uh, to be built in Vienna, but then was moved to Brussels. And so uh, there are actually a, a two parts in this publication. One is like um, trying to um, track down the story of um, uh, how it was actually uh, restored and all the different material questions and so on. And the other one would then be uh, giving examples how from the drawing it would proceed to the original. So what we can see here is that the, actually the frieze is not flat at all. Uh, it is like sculptured, like a semi-mosaic, uh, well it's a mosaic and it's like a, a semi-relief. So this for instance would be glass, it mm -hmm. would just be crave. And uh, then we can see the falcon, the eyes, so different aspects. Uh, and uh, what is quite interesting is of course that uh, it is a klimt, it's, uh, um, but at the same time it is uh, the original uh, you can see the work in progress, since you can still see his annotations, well, not maybe not on this page, but there are uh, seven panels, and on each panel there's the annotation of him for the instructions for the mosaics, so the ones mm -hmm. who were executing, actually. And so what is quite interesting in here is that we, or that the Mac actually did, uh, the Atemur, um, did uh, transcribe every annotation that was, uh, or that is to be seen, like here. You can see that he annotates uh, mosaic, uh, and um, like uh, the white one would be Perlmutter, for instance, so Necre, for instance. And um, so you can observe also the way that he would get to a certain uh, conclusion, to a certain, uh, um, um, yeah, to a certain form in, in some way. And so this is interesting that it's not just a finished painting by Klimt or a finished drawing by Klimt, but of course, then here we have the whole one. So it's expectation and fulfillment. Actually, there are two of these uh, in, on both sides of the living room or of the dining room. So one on that side and one on the other side. And you have the tree of life, which is easily to see here. Then on the left side, a woman. Actually, it's a dancer. A, a dancer. Expectation. And then on the other side would be the fulfillment, which would then also be on that panel, but on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. So through nature, which is mm -hmm. here the rose bush or the rose tree, mm -hmm. uh, through nature, from the uh, expectation it would come to fulfillment. And what I guess is really kind of uh, interesting is not just in the fulfillment, of course, the kiss, mm -hmm. which is a topic. What is quite interesting is how Josef Hoffmann then, who was of course the head and creator of the Viennese Werkstätte, would uh, actually inter um, interfere with his architecture. You can see actually here the figure of this uh, tree, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is more or less what you can see here, if you compare mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You can see there's kind of form like a triangle with a... Right. And then when you go inside the garden, here is actually the room inside. When you go inside the garden, you can see that here it's like man and woman, like mm -hmm. the fulfillment, which would be here then, so to say, uh, also exposed to the outside. You would have the sunlight in the morning, which would go on expectation, and in the evening on the other side on fulfillment. So it's like a whole, it's like really... You kind of uh, took the ideas or took the... Like the idea of the Gesamtkunstwerk, yeah. which yeah. is of course uh, trying to interfere into your daily life through the yeah. art. This is the balcony upstairs. And what is quite funny, it's still privately owned. Mm -hmm. And so there are hardly any, there are actually there are no color photography existing since the owners don't <laughs> like to have it, uh, it's, you cannot actually... Published. Yeah, or they don't like to, um, for one reason or the other, to... Um, Makes it, of course, more... more even more desirable special. to yeah. go in there. And of course, uh, the people who edited this catalog and uh, did the restoration, of course, had been the, uh, the opportunity. So here we have the Another first plate. drawings. Yeah. Yeah. So at the, so the very beginning, you see it's really very square. Yes. You still have the rose bush, but mm -hmm. which is here now in the center, and it's then shifting on the right. Yeah. And instead of the rose bush, you will have the tree of life, 
and the rose brush will be on the right, but oh, not right. square, but yeah. in a round shape. You already have the different falcons, but which are in the rose brush here, and mm -hmm. then will be diminished and just three over the whole. And so you have different aspects of Who owns uh, the drawings? Uh, well, these drawings, um, uh, this one is uh, a copy drawing, it's at the Wien right. Museum, and these ones are uh, at the Museum of Applied Arts, just right. like the just like the big one. Okay. So, yeah, then here, of course, uh, connections to Asian art, uh, mm -hmm. which was very important now around 1900. You can see with others, like the panels that actually mm -hmm. uh, do come across. And yeah, other, yeah, try to, to compare with material that was actually accessible at that time in Vienna. So he could have seen that, just like his girls. Mm -hmm. So this is how Klimt ends up uh, in 2012. <laughs> so it's a whole article about why souvenirs do work and why Klimt is uh, that much uh, appreciated.